in a world where nothing matters anymore. In a series that you wish to God would Adelaide. I'm serious. Star Wars. Can I say I want Star Wars to- <laughs> Probably not. You two will probably swoop in and go, We think that Star Wars is a living autonomous being that deserves a chance to live. And I say no. Pull the plug. Pull it now. Well, anyway, Charmin, I'm not even going to learn the rest of her name because I don't care. As CNN puts it, Hashtag bisexual woman of color. A woman of color that got two golden globes or something. Like, we're supposed to care. Golden globes. My God. If I walked into someone's house and they had a golden globe, I wouldn't give three lamb tail shakes of a shit, honey. And then I go, well, that's a nice little golden statue. Have you heard about King Cobra? JFSC? He makes wads and he deals lizards. <laughs> I just make up my own King Cobra fallacy. She was interviewed by CNN to talk to us about the new Star Wars movie that's surely going to do just as good as the Marvels and be just as inspirational. There, our next guest is an inspiration to women all over the world, including her home country of Pakistan. Filmmaker and activist Sharmin Obechinoy is the only female director to have won two Academy Awards by the age of 37. She's also the first woman and the first person of color to direct a Star Wars film. It's set to be released in 2026. You can say that the force is strong with this one. You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. And we're in 2024 now. And I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. It's over. We are screwed. And we're in 2024 now. Well, no shit. Well, we've just confirmed that Kathleen Kennedy is actually a Quack. dude, apparently. Because everything that came with her didn't count. We have had years of female-focused Star Wars. Remember the Force is female? And how they tried to force you to like it? It's, well, I was very excited to kind of be that. Because I feel like Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal. So it was kind of cool to have like this sort of woman-centered figure. Hmm. No, sir, I didn't like it. The recent Star Wars films have been nothing short of a travesty of cinema in American culture. One of the few things we had in America that was cool to other countries is now absolute cringe. People look at the new Star Wars like three episodes of COVID. How come the Star Wars films are so long and they told you a story that didn't matter? And the irony is, they killed off the two dudes that lived and the lady that died is the one they kept alive. They CGI'd in Carrie Fisher's rotted corpse to pretend to teach Rey the Force. Because of course, she was a Jedi just as good as Luke. Am I right? <laughs> the Force is female. If you will need a more perfect example of how the modern Star Wars movies are planned and run, look no further than the last Star Wars celebration live in Europe of 2023. Literally, there were so many points where there's just this awkward silence as the presenter lady stood there like a deer in the headlights praying to God that there would be some sort of transition and something happening. And the only thing that continued to happen was shit going completely and utterly off the rails as she smiled nervously into the camera. <laughs> Why are we pretending that Star Wars hasn't been female-led forever? You've got Rey's trilogy. Oh my god, don't even get me started on Rey. One of the worst written Star Wars characters ever. Literally everything the chick did, she was the greatest. The only Jedi that needed no training. Who thought this up? Oh, that's right, they didn't have a plan. And then they admitted it years after all the movies came out. They're kind of like, ha ha ha, we're playing it by ear. And then we gave it to J.J. Abrams, who literally couldn't direct his way out of a wet no, paper bag. And you can quote me on that. Look what he, the dude killed Star Trek and Star Wars, and everybody still pretends like this dude isn't a no, joke. He's out of line, but he's right. Women weren't represented. Well, I'll be goddamn. I think at the heart of everything, I am a storyteller and an activist. And um, my body of work over the last 20 years has been uh, guided by my activism. And every single 
piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert, but it is there. And I think that as a storyteller, uh, I'm not sure if all of you know this, but I'm not a trained filmmaker. So I never went to film school. Um, I went to um, Smith College and did my undergraduate and studied economics and political science like a good Pakistani girl. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. Nothing's more reassuring than a woman who has no experience of making films. But she's more than ready to do some activism, because that's what exactly what we all need when we watch movies. To be reminded of activism and activist people. To be taken to a galaxy far, far away, where they also have gender identity politic issues. Nothing says fun and exhilarating. Oh boy, Kathleen Kennedy does it again. I can't wait for 2026 when Star Wars commits seppuku yet again. We have no great stories from women other than J.K. Rowling. And since she isn't politically correct, the Alphabet Mafia want her silenced. You did it again!